Call Porter Ministry by Ellen G. White. Section 1, Call Porter Evangelism. Chapter 1, Our Literature and Its Mission. Beginning to print. At a meeting held in Dorchester, Massachusetts, November 1848, I had been given a view of the proclamation of the sealing message and of the duty of the brethren to publish the light that was shining upon our pathway. After coming out of vision, I said to my husband, I have a message for you. You must begin to print a little paper and send it out to the people. Let it be small at first, but as the people read, they will send you means with which to print, and it will be a success from the first. From this small beginning, I was show, it was shown to me to be like streams of light that went clear around the world. Life Sketches, page 125. Make truth clear and plain. Our publications have a most sacred work to do in making clear, simple, and plain the spiritual basis of our faith. Everywhere the people are taking sides. All are ranging themselves either under the banner of truth and righteousness or under the banner of the apostate powers that are contending for the supremacy. At this time, God's message to the world is to be given with such prominence and power that the people will be brought face to face, mind to mind, heart to heart with truth. They must be brought to see its superiority over the multitudinous errors that are pushing their way into notice to supplant, if possible, the word of God for this solemn time. The great object of our publications is to exalt God to call men's attention to the living truths of his word. God calls upon us to lift up not our own standard, not the standard of this world, but his standard of truth. Testimonies, Volume 7, pages 150 and 151. Publish Light and Truth. In the night of March 2, 1907, many things were revealed to me regarding the value of our publications on present truth and the small effort that is being made by our brethren and sisters in the churches for their wide circulation. I have been repeatedly shown that our presses should now be constantly employed in publishing light and truth. This is a time of spiritual darkness in the churches of the world. Ignorance of divine things has hidden God and the truth from view. The forces of evil are gathering in strength. Satan flatters his co-workers that he will do a work that will captivate the world. While partial inactivity has come upon the church, Satan and his hosts are intensely active. The professed ch Christian churches are not converting the world, for they are themselves corrupted with selfishness and pride and need to feel the converting power of God in their midst before they can lead others to a purer or higher standard. Testimonies, Volume 9, page 65. Means of quickly giving the message. The book work should be the means of quickly giving the sacred light of present truth to the world. The publications that come forth from our presses today are to be of such a character as to strengthen every pin and pillar of the faith that was established by the Word of God and by the revelations of His Spirit. The truth that God has given for his people in these last days should keep them firm when there come into the church those who present false theories. The truth that has stood firm against the attacks of the enemy for more than half a century must still be the confidence and comfort of God's people. Our evidence to non-professors that we have the truth of the word of God will be given in a life of strict self-denial. We must not make a mockery of our faith, but ever keep before us the example of him who, though he was the Prince of Heaven, stooped to a life of self-denial and sacrifice to vindicate the righteousness of his Father's word. Let us each resolve to do our best that the light of our good works may shine forth to the world. Testimonies, Volume 9, pages 69 and 70. To prepare a people to meet God. The publications sent forth from our printing houses are to prepare a people to meet God. Throughout the world they are to do the same work that was done by John the Baptist for the Jewish nation. By startling messages of warning, God's prophet awakened men from worldly dreaming. Through him God called blacks backsliding Israel to repentance. By his presentation of truth he exposed popular delusions. In contrast with the false theories of his time, 
truth in his teaching stood forth as an eternal certainty. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, was John's message, Matthew 3, 2. This same message through the publications from our printing houses is to be given to the world today, and in a large degree through our publishing houses is to be accomplished the work of the other angel who came down from heaven with great power and who lightens the earth with his glory. Testimonies, Volume 7, pages 139 and 140. Publications to go everywhere. Our publications should go everywhere. Let them be issued in many languages. The third angel's message is to be given through this medium and through the living teacher. You who believe the truth for this time, wake up. It is your duty now to bring in all the means possible to help those who understand the truth to proclaim it. Part of the money that comes in from the sale of our publication should be used to increase our facilities for the production of more literature that will open blind eyes and break up the fallow ground of the heart. Testimonies, Volume 9, page 62. There are many places in which the voice of the minister cannot be heard, places that can be reached only by our publications. The books, papers, and tracts filled with the Bible truths that the people need. Our literature is to be distributed everywhere. The truth is to be sown beside all waters, for we know not which will prosper, this or that. In our erring judgment, we may think it unwise to give literature to the very ones who would accept the truth most readily. We know not what may be the results of giving away a leaflet containing present truth. Manuscript 127, 1909. We are fast approaching the end. The printing and circulation of the books and papers that contain the truth for this time are to be our work. Testimonies, Volume 8, page 89. To every country and clime, publications must be multiplied and scattered like the leaves of autumn. These silent messengers are enlightening and molding the minds of thousands in every country and in every clime. Review and Herald, November 21, 1878. In every language, from city to city, from country to country, they, canvasser evangelists, are to carry the publications containing the promise of the Savior's soon coming. These publications are to be translated into every language. For to all the world the gospel is to be preached. To every worker Christ promises the divine efficiency that will make his labors a success. Testimonies, Volume 9, page 34. To lighten the whole world. The world is to receive the light of truth through an evangelizing ministry of the word in our books and periodicals. Testimonies, Volume 9, page 61. From our books and papers, bright beams of light are to shine forth to enlighten the world in regard to present truth. Testimonies, Volume 8, page 87.